Saturday afternoon basketball in the state of Indiana. There's nothing quite like it, and boy, do we have a good matchup for you. Girls basketball, the University Trailblazers travel to the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars, and these teams fighting it out for the Pioneer Academic Athletic Conference. And it's coming to you live on Indiana SRN. Thanks so much for tuning in. Jerry Lewis with you alongside me, the coach, Keith Myers. And, boy, this is a good-looking matchup on paper, Coach. We got two teams, the Trailblazers coming in 8-2, 2-0 and in conference play. On the other side, the Cougars 11-6. and They've played more games, and they have a stud and Izzy Reed on their team. But this is a really balanced matchup when you look at these rosters uh, together on paper. You look at a 2A school like University, they play a 2A schedule. And, and so you look at that and you go, they're going to play a 1A school. Well, this 1A school is not like any other 1A school in central Indiana. This is the Greenwood Christian Cougars. As you said, they are ran by Izzy Reed, but there are a lot of great talent on this team. This should be a very interesting game, and I think whoever gets to 47 will get uh, to the will get to the championship uh, game, and it should be very interesting as uh, we look uh, real close uh, at the uh, all the teams, but you know Izzy Reed right there shooting at the free throw line. She she leads this team, and but uh, she's very humble of doing it. But uh, you're going to see a great shooter today. And real recently, she eclipsed a pretty impressive mark, becoming the all-time scoring leader in Johnson County. And that point mark is at 18:48. Just, I mean, quite an impressive number. I mean, you know, a lot of boys are capable of reaching that close to that 2,000 mark. But for girls, it's pretty rare and it's pretty exciting. That number for her is quite impressive. She scored 1846 uh, more points than I did in my career. <laughs> pretty much the same for me. <laughs> yeah, there there you go. Uh, you know, and she surpasses Allie Lehman from Indian Creek in 2012. And, you know, uh, Allie went on and had a great career and uh, is doing a great job in the military and serving her country. So, uh what a great competition, and uh, what a great honor to, to be able to break her record. We can be impressed by the scoring from Izzy Reed. She's averaging almost 24 points a game. She's averaging a double-double with 13.5 rebounds as well. But this, as a team collectively, they like to score the basketball, averaging 64 points per game. So Izzy has some pretty good counterparts on the floor with her, like Brooklyn Stubblefield. Ellie Bigelow and Savannah Fry, all three of those girls also averaging double figures. Savannah Fry is a very good player. I love I love uh, uh, Brooklyn as well. She plays well. I tell you though, the key I think the key tonight is the big uh, the big uh, girl down. Dory Odell has to have a really good game, rebounding, throwing the ball outlet, and then then finishing the play uh, for Greenwood to be real successful. Dory Odell will be the fifth starter for the Cougars, wearing their. Home white jerseys on their home floor here this afternoon. On the other side for University, just as good a team. They are as well. 8-2 is their record, averaging nearly 62 points per game. Their last game was a loss to Indianapolis home school, a close one, 49-55. But they got some good girls leading the way as well. Three in double figures for them, including Kelsey DuBois and Sierra Hines at almost 16 points a game for both of those girls. And if you look at 15.6 and 15.9, they need to get the ball. But I think the key here as well is uh, the, the Washington girl who only gives 3.3 a game freshman, but she does a nice job off the bench with them and sometimes uh, it, it even has the scoring uh, prowess that can do the job. Uh, she could be the, the key. And the rest of the starting five for the Trailblazers will include Washington, Peyton C., the third leading scorer at 13.7, and then Jordan Patterson closing out the starting five for the University Trailblazers under the direction of Justin Blanding, who in his sixth year with an impressive mark, 107 and 28. Yeah, I would take that as a coach. Uh, you know, I, I coached for a long time. Uh, getting 100 is a really neat uh, thing. Uh, and uh, congratulations to him. But, you know, you look at this, uh, the one step back that I would say for university, they have not played. Yesterday was the first time they played in a month. Are they? Did they knock off the rust enough to play in a, state, uh, in a championship game? That will be tell to see if 32 minutes of basketball. And for the Cougars, they – Last played a week ago in a win against Lutheran, a big-time win for them, 89-45 to under the direction of Alan Weems and his ninth-year coaching with a record of 126-92. and The last nine games have gone to university. They lead the series 
6-3. And the last game between these two teams, the last time they met was back in 2019 in a regional matchup. February 9th of 2019, University took that one easily, 55-29. Both teams now have gone to their bench. I want to remind you, before we take our first break, GCA Basketball is brought to you by Craig Reed with WR2 Advisors of Raymond James, located in downtown Indianapolis, where he pursues his clients' financial goals with experienced guidance. You can reach Craig at 317-968-1900. Raymond James & Associates Incorporated, member of New York Stock Exchange, SIPC. As we go over the rules of the crowd of, of sportsmanship, and we really want to see that. You're listening and watching Indiana SRN, where you're always in the game. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. Never miss a big game by downloading the IHSAA TV app for free on any device. For your iPhone or Apple TV, check the App Store. On your Android or Android TV device, load up the Google Play Store. Have a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick? We have the app for you. Check us out on Facebook Live, Twitter, or YouTube Live by searching for IHSAA TV. Or as always, click to IHSAATV.org for quick and easy access to your favorite IHSAA live and archived events. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Hey, it's Keith Myers from Indiana Sports Radio Network. We thank you that you're watching the game tonight on Indiana SRN. If you would like to know more information about Indiana SRN, send me an email, coach at indianasrn.org. As vice president of this company, we hope that you sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN where you're always in the game. Can't make it to the game? We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. Welcome back to Greenwood Christian Academy. The Cougars hosting the Trailblazers of University. The winner will be crowned the Pioneer Academic Athletic Conference champions. Jerry Lewis with you alongside Keith Myers. As we get set for this one, a really good one on paper. These two teams like to score, Keith, but they're also really good on the defensive end. Greenwood Christian only allowing 47 points to their opponents, while the Trailblazers 33. So pretty nice point margin that they have there between both of those squads. Yeah, and you look at the keys of the game. We we'll start with uh, Greenwood Christian, rebounds, limiting turnovers, and pace it has to be a fast-pacing game as we'll check out with the public address announcer. So you can hear they are talking about Izzy Reed and becoming the all-time scoring leader in Johnson County. And before we meet the starting lineups, they will present a ball to Izzy Reed after she eclipsed. Allie Lehman as the Johnson County all-time leading scorer, and she's closing in on that 2,000-point mark as well. It's a very cool moment for her, and she will be playing her next basketball at Indiana Wesleyan University. You know, the, the neat thing is she wanted Coach to be in the picture. goes, no, 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 Coach. He, it's all yours, and that's, that's pretty cool. Let's look up the lineups brought to you by our good friends at Morales Group. 
In the starting lineup first for University is a sophomore forward ranked number double zero, Kelsey Dubois. She's their leading scorer at 15 and a half points per game. Also in the starting lineup is a senior guard ranked number four, Sierra Hines, at 15.9 points per game. Number 12, a sophomore guard, Cameron Washington. Number 13, another sophomore guard in Peyton C. And rounding out the starting lineup is a sophomore forward ranked number 32, Jordan Patterson. And now for the home team on the scoreboard. The Cougars of Greenwood Christian Academy, their typical starting five with Ellie Bigelow, a junior guard averaging 10.5 points per game. Number 13, another senior guard is Brooklyn Stubblefield. We have number 15, a center and a junior, Dory O'Dell. A senior forward, ranked number 23 in Savannah Fry. And of course, averaging a double-double at 24 points a game and 13 and a half rebounds at senior guard in Izzy Reed. Finishing up my keys for high, uh, University uh, High School. They need to play together. Coach is very concerned. No individuals, just play together. Let's get it done. They have to block out. They are concerned about Reed and Odell and their rebounding ability. I, you got to throw in Fry with that as well. She crashes the board. And then they got to find their shooters, put a hand in the face, and eliminate turnovers and outscore their opponent. How about that as a key? Outscoring your opponent. Probably a key with every team in every game. Here's the tip, and the Cougars... We'll control it as Stubblefield tracks it down. Cougars will go right to left. Stubblefield dumps it down to Reed, who passes out to one of those shooters in Ellie Bigelow. Cougars moving the ball around. Deep three, right wing goes down for Brooklyn Stubblefield, and that's how the scoring will start in this one. And if she gets in a rhythm, Watch out. She could watch you up for 50. That might be one of the most important keys is finding those shooters if you're university. And Stubblefield just might be the best one. As she pushes it up the floor to Bigelow in the corner. Bigelow being hounded by Washington. So get it to high post to Reed. Cougars. Staying patient, not much movement. Dumped down to Reed, and she's trying to work hard against Peyton C. Good close defense here by the Trailblazers as they have put together a solid possession compared to the first, but it's going to result in a foul called on Patterson. You know, what Patterson tried to do is try to beat the pass and ran over, by, ran over and she probably hurt herself. Fry able to beat oh, Patterson off the oh, dribble, oh, and the right-handed layup is going to go for Savannah. How about eyeing the basket every way, Jared? Did not take the ball, uh, take the eye off the rim. Washington will run the point for University as they run their set. Left wing three is going to go down. That's the first bucket of the game. Sierra Hines, she's shooting 39% from that area. Fry stuck in the corner. I like the man-to-man -man defense University's playing here. Stubblefield, pick and roll with Odell. They swing it around, quick passing. Everybody touching the ball for Greenwood Christian Academy, but it's going to result in a steal. Hines tried to dump it down to Washington, and they're going to say Izzy Reed gave her a bump in the back. Anticipated the, the steal and then took the ball to the basket. Good Unselfish play. They get it in. Another three look from Hines. This time she misses. And the long rebound out to Stubblefield. Brooklyn drives it in. Now kicks out to Reed. Her three in and out. And at 6-2, Du Bois tracks down the rebound. Yeah, she runs the floor well. She's a good shooter. She's going to be able to stretch out the floor on offense for the Trailblazers. And here she is, top of the key. Thought about a three, instead swings it over to C. Coach Blanding calling out a play to University, so they will reset. Hines, right side, Fry closes out on her. They swing it over left side. Down low to Dubois, Odell trying to work on her. A wild shot, good defense by Odell. 
Double field. Swings it to Fry. Dumps it down to Odell. Odell can't get the runner to go. University looking to push, push it up the floor, but a traveling violation going to be called on Washington. you got to like the post play of Odell. Maybe use the backboard, not just straight on. Use the backboard. 5-3 the score, Greenwood. Fry down to Odell again. She does use the backboard this time, but still can't get it to go. Over the outreached arms of Dubois. C uses a screen. Shot doesn't go, and Reed gets a rebound. Already three rebounds for Reed for the day. She's averaging 13 and a half. Stubblefield tries to draw a foul. It's not going to be called, but this time there's going to be a foul after Reed picks up another rebound, this time on the offensive end. And that foul is going to be on Kelsey Dubois. Fry lobs it over to Reed, who saves it right before it goes out of bounds. And then runs it over to the coach. And then she gets it back. She's trying to score, which she does. First field goal of the game for Izzy Reed. Nice. Telegraph pass. Brooklyn did a nice job at deflecting that out of bounds. Early start, you know, really good start for, uh, for Greenwood here. Uh, but I, I really like the offensive movement of University. Stubblefield almost coming away with that steal. She has nearly four a game. A tough defensive team are the Cougars. Du Bois trying to find the cutting Hines. Good defense there from Savannah Fry. Bigelow hands off to Fry. Nobody picks her up, so she'll step into a three. Just off the mark. Odell keeps it alive. She's being hounded down low. University looking for a travel. And finally, the Trailblazers try to reach in and try to cause the jump ball. You know, and, and I have to be honest with you, in girls basketball, you got to get rid of the ball, got to put the ball up. They're going to allow that little bump, little bump, little bump. That's not going to be a foul in varsity basketball. Maybe in junior high, but not in varsity basketball. You got to be a little bit stronger with the basketball. Washington now will bring it up for the Trailblazers. Izzy Reed read that pass perfectly, and a fast break layup will go down for her. How about the anticipation? Another one of those telegraphed passes that the Cougars read easily. Bigelow trying to get a steal of her own, but this time they'll get her with a hand check call. Now the, the the inconsistency of that is you're 50 feet away from the basket, and she did lay the hands, and now you call the foul. So kind of tough, but I understand. <laughs> I never missed a call when I officiated. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, sure. We got coaches calling me now. <laughs> <laughs> Bad pass from Hines. As C can't handle it. Stubblefield pushes it up to Fry. The foul and the bucket. A chance at a three-point play for Savannah. The foul's going to go against Sierra Hines. Nice strong take by Fry, and the three-point play is successful. Another bad pass. Hines can't handle that one. Fry gets the steal, and Odell nearly gives it away as... C and Stubblefield, both number 13s, hit the floor. Wrestling sectionals do not start till January 31st. You like that joke? I do. Okay, good. I, I got it. I got you it. didn't laugh. I just. <laughs> I'll laugh at the next one. <laughs> Stubblefield is running the point for the Cougars. Gets it into the short corner. Good defense there from Abby Hannon, who just checked in. Boy with a skip pass. Hannon around her back and trying to get it over to Hines, which she does. Another steal, Bigelow this time. One girl to beat, which she does. Fast break points are crucial right now for Greenwood Christian Academy, giving them this nine-point lead. Driving into the lane is Washington and a whistle away from the basketball. Either a foul or a traveling violation. 
Must have been a travel. As another turnover committed by the Trailblazers. Down low to Reed off of her fingertips. And the University, for the most most part, is doing a nice job of preventing Reed from getting good looks inside the paint. What, what you're doing is you're just putting two persons, let her catch the ball, then screen her so she has to fight for position. Good call. Hines, who has the lone field goal, hands off to C. Wild shot on the right side goes down for Peyton C. First points they scored in four minutes. Bigelow in the corner. May have had her foot on the line. The shot doesn't go down. Reed has it ripped away by Washington, and now they're going to get Washington with a reach-in foul. They're going to let you play as physical as you can handle it. I, I really like this officiating crew. Guy behind us, Jason Ferguson, has been doing this for a long, long time. One of the finest state officials in Indiana. Fry will get it down to Reed, who swings it at the elbow to Odell. Here's Savannah. Nice dump down. Good look from Savannah Fry. She'll get the assist as Dory Odell converts. Nice basket. Under a minute. 50 seconds left, an 11-point lead, the largest so far for the Cougars, and a quick traveling violation committed by University. And what, what Greenwood has done is they sealed off that paint, so once you're getting there, all of a sudden it's no longer there. You have to do something with the basketball. You take that extra step. What will the Cougars do here with 40 seconds left to go in the first? Stubblefield has to pick up her dribble, hands off to Bigelow. She got a bump. Going to the basket. How about Stutterfield telling her where to go, pointed where the ball is going to go. She took it off and get and go. Nice job. This team just communicates so well, Jarrett. Bigelow at the free throw line. Gets the first one to go down. Aspen Creek Grill in Noblesville. They have comfort, fresh food every day for you. Delivered to your door or to your table. Try our Pow Wow Shrimp. Great steaks and great staff ready to serve you. Give them a call, 317-559-3300. That's where Jared's going to take us after the game. Uh, he's going to buy. Is that right? I mean, you. some of that money might come from you if you're paying my, uh, paying my check. Ball goes out of bounds. Trailblazers still have it. I haven't been to Aspen Creek Girl, but it sounds like it's pretty good. Oh, it's a good place. Inside to Du Bois. She dumps it down. And getting the shot to go is Abby Hannon. Under 10 to go. Reed will put up a shot. And now University has a chance with five. Du Bois swings it up to Hines. She's got one second. Reed from half court. The heave is going to fall up short. And the Cougars with a commanding 18-7 lead after one. You're watching the PAC Championship on Indiana SRN. Welcome back to Greenwood Christian Academy. The Cougars, 18 points in that first quarter, only giving up seven to University, and they'll start the second quarter with possession. Inside to Reed. Doesn't like the matchup with the boys as she kicks it back out to Fry. She'll try a second time over her left shoulder. Good defense by Du Bois, but it was tipped out by University. I want to say hi to all the grandmas and grandpas that are watching from Greenwood. We got a lot of people watching tonight because of the limited crowd space. I want to say hi to all those folks and 
Thanks for tuning in tonight. Yeah, thanks for watching on Indiana SRN. Bigelow cutting. So it's like a tip, trip to the free throw line. Good find in the corner from Fry. It's the first foul called on Abby Hannon. Now 16 fouls already for University. The next one will have Greenwood Christian in the bonus the rest of the way. Bigelow hits the first, misses the second, and another jump ball. Did you miss the game everyone is talking about? Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll never miss a game again with pregame notifications. Hit that red button. Also hit that bell on Indiana SRN, where you're always in the game. We get a whistle on the inbounds, and... <laughs> Stetterfield tried to make a quick steal and kick the ball. Good call. This Greenwood Christian team loves going after those steals. Oh, 50-50 balls. Watch out. Du Bois, nice move. Her first two points of the game. If you're a young girl at home and you see that young girl to put the ball on the floor, then she had the ball up over her head to make that basket. And at 6-2, it's going to be hard for any Cougars player to try to contest those shots. The boys went out to contest that one from Reed. The three-pointer is no good. And on the other side, going left to right, comes the Trailblazers. Down the middle of the lane. Nobody picks up C, and nobody boxes out. Hannon down low. C gets a second crack at it, and she'll be awarded with a trip to the free throw line. First foul called on Brooklyn Stubblefield. Yeah, you got to steal that, but you got to block him out. Got to get him over your back. Peyton C with two points. To her credit, four different scores for University to make up their nine points. First free throw trip for the Trailblazers, and C hits the first. It's quiet in the gym, doesn't it? And that quietness may have gotten to see as she un unable to connect on the second one. Stubblefield met by Hines. Gets it over left side to Bigelow. No substitutions yet for Greenwood Christian. The same starting five has played all nine minutes, nine and a half. Stubblefield. Tough take there. Wow. She wanted a foul. Nothing called. University with C. Nobody picks her up, and she takes it all the way. Yeah, you got to recognize that she had the ball. Peyton C averaging 13.7, the third highest mark on the team. Another great pass from Fry as the defense collapsed on her, and Doriel Dell will go to the line. College Hunks and Movers, the company that provides removal local long-distance full-service moving and office relocation services, including home decor uh, donation pickup service and non-profit partner organizations. College Hunkton Movers, 317-449-5242. Dory Odell with her third point of the game. Odell is not, she's, she's not going to score the basketball. Obviously, when she gets those looks down low, she's going to take them, but... Her role in this offense is still pivotal because she's able to stretch the floor, get girls open that are cutting to the basket, cutting to the ball. She plays a pivotal role in the starting five. I call her a junk player because she gets everything else that no one else wants to do. Trailblazers trying to answer. They fall back to nine. Good hands there by Stubblefield. And this down court... This time down the court, the half-court offense, Greenwood Christian played a much better half-court offense than they do during the transition. Bad pass by University. Odell knocks it away. Stubblefield with a good pass down low to Reed, who decides to kick it back outside. Reed working against the taller Du Bois. Stubblefield with a nice cut to the basket. Uh, can't get the runner to go. Up the floor comes University. Good move by Peyton C. Referee says the hands were straight up. No foul called there. A second chance won't go for University either. 
And another jump ball, possession arrow to the Cougars. And I love the new signal. When it gets straight up in the air, they're going to indicate the coach. I saw the contact. Hands up in the air. I'm letting that go. That's great. Defense is being solid here. First half for the Cougars. Just 12 points. Bigelow on the drive. Her layup goes. Bigelow now with seven. Folks, I'm telling you, this game is physical. Quick bucket on the other end for Peyton C. She's leading in scoring for University. She has seven as well. Sierra Hines out on Izzy Reed. Cougars spacing the floor. A bad decision from Odell as Bigelow was making the cut. The boy swings it over to C. She's got the hot hand. That jumper, however, won't fall. Speed of the game starting to pick up. Bigelow looks like she had her pocket picked for a second from Washington, but instead referees will say enough contact for a foul. Look at Bigelow here. Takes the ball. I mean, she's going up against, what, 6-2? <laughs> Help side defense from Du Bois was... Like a David and Goliath right there. <laughs> <laughs> defense was late to get there, and Bigelow able to beat her girl off the dribble. 65% free throw shooter is Bigelow right now. Four of five. I get five of six. She's got nine points on a night. And a timeout is going to be called by University and coach Justin Blanding. Largest lead of the game at 11. The Cougars still in control. Defense playing tough. You're watching the Pack Championship on Indiana SRN. Make it to the game? We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. Your hauling or moving project has arrived and College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving has you covered. Honest. Uniform. Nice. Knowledgeable. Service. College Hunks hauling junk and moving. Back with second quarter action on Indian SRN. Thanks for tuning in. Jarrett Lewis with you alongside the coach, Keith Myers. Cougars have led most of the way. 25-14. Out of the timeout, what will University have here at the halfway mark? You know, at the halfway mark, you probably gave them some rest. You, you've had a lot of time off. Uh, and I also think they really want to go inside. Another thing, too, we, we mentioned it earlier that the same starting five is out there. There's been no substitutions from Allen Weems, but University has only had one substitution of their own. They're playing six girls. We have played 12 minutes now. Washington with a pass fake. Hands off to Du Bois. She can't get that lane shot to go. Reed swings it over to Fry. She's got to look at a three. Just off the mark, Reed trying to save it, but threw it right into the hands of Sierra Hines. How about the save, though? We get a foul at the half court line from Brooklyn Stubblefield trying to reach in and get another steal. Sierra Hines gets it in to Patterson. Stubblefield guarding closely and she's gonna cause a travel. Gonna be calling on Peyton C. Good defense there by Brooklyn, and now she'll run the point for the Cougars. Izzy Reed tries to get it down low to Stubblefield. A lot of contact there as two players hit the floor. Hines trying to beat Bigelow. Spin move, shot won't go. And Fry with the defensive rebound. 
We'll give it down low to Reed. Working on Washington, and a foul going to be called on her. And I think the coaching staff at Greenwood Christian has told Reed to go and aggressive and get in foul, get them in foul trouble because this is the third time she's down to four. This time she posted up and she um, drew the foul. Reed, four points in the first quarter. Her first trip to the free throw line, a spot that she is so accustomed to getting to. Eighty-three percent free throw shooter is Reed. She leads the team, and she goes two for two. Now a thirteen-point lead for the Cougars, and for the first time we see a zone defense look from GCA, which tells you they don't think they can shoot from outside. Here's a nice pass to the free throw line, and now Hines will give it back to a newly checked in player in Arion Sherrod, but she can't handle the pass. And now the Cougars will bring it the other way on the offensive side. Reed hands off to Fry, who tries to get it back to Izzy. Three-man offense there for the Cougars as Dory Odell comes up with the bucket. And it did a nice job pounding that ball inside. You want to get um, the Bulls in trouble, foul trouble. Good help side defense from Fry. Fast break here for the Cougars. Oh. Bigelow decides to give it up. Nice defense indeed. Good recovery from Jordan Patterson. Looks like it's going to be a, an assist given to Bigelow. How about Patterson just... Pan, pancaking that ball. Not allowing Reed to get off that shot. I did that with my four-year-old granddaughter the other day. Pounded the ball. No mercy uh, playing against your granddaughter, No, huh? no. Man, she'd take me to basket. she beat me. <laughs> Sherrod has it right wing. Blazers. Here's a shot. Good. From the elbow. That's Peyton Washington. Excuse me, Cameron Washington. Reed thought about a three instead. Hands off to Fry, who beats her girl off the dribble. And Savannah Fry, her third field goal of the ballgame. She has seven. Brooklyn Stubblefield, an easy pass. She gives off to Fry. Nice pass from Reed back to Stubblefield. Wow. Cougars have all the momentum now with one minute left to go in the half. University struggling to score. Du Bois trying to end that drought, which she does. Too easy, too easy. Whole lot of open space there in the lane to make the pass and to make the shot. See what the Cougars do here with 40 seconds to go. Fry has a lot of room to make a move. Odell's shot is no good as Fry hits the floor and Sherrod going to be the one that knocks her down. Never miss a game and watch as many times as you like. Go to our YouTube page and subscribe now. Get notifications about upcoming events. Hit that red subscribe button. Hit that bell and you'll never miss a game again. Go to YouTube and type in Indiana SRN. Indiana SRN where you're always in the game. Fry, a perfect three of three from the free throw line after hitting both of those. Du Bois, high post. Turn and shoot, doesn't go too strong. Offensive rebound. And now a third opportunity and a foul called. Foul. 23 White is the call. That's Savannah Fry, her first foul. Ten team fouls for Greenwood Christian, so C will be shooting two free throws anyway. First one rattles out. I love it. So quiet in the gym. What I thought was very interesting is Savannah knew she was coming out. She goes right to the bench and stays. Coach Reams talking to her, and she's just not her head. Yeah, I know. I reached. I shouldn't have done that. She has three on the night. Second free throw, also no good, but C gets the ball back and misses that shot. Bigelow will take it all the way on the left side. 
Ellie Bigelow, how about the first half for her? Trailblazers, six to go. GCA traps up top. Trailblazers swing it around nicely. Runner doesn't go, and that's how the halftime buzzer. That's how the half will come to a close with the buzzer sounding. Greenwood Christian Academy, 18 to seven. They were up after one, and they keep the pedal to the metal. Now up 37-18 at the half. Yeah. And now what you have to do is you go back and you regroup at the university because I think inside they can beat them off the dribble. So what you have to do is Greenwood is step up and fill that hole. If you're Greenwood, just continue to run the floor at the pace you want because that was one of the keys of the game is keeping the pace of the ball game. Don't forget tonight we got another big game for you. Had one this morning, the matinee at 12 o'clock. This game today at 3.30 and tonight, Jared, this is a big one. This is a boys varsity basketball. Heritage Christian on fire, taking on Ledman. A great 2-3 matchup. Uh, class 3 school of Ledman and 2A school of Heritage Christian. And you've seen Wiggins play and you have seen COVID play. Both of those kids are really good. Heritage Christian could have a pretty good game tonight. Boys and girls looking very very nice right now at Heritage Christian. Let's quickly go over the halftime scoring for University. Du Bois has four points, Hines with three, Washington with two, Peyton C leading the way with seven, and Abby Hannon has added two points. For the Cougars, Bigelow leading the way with 11, nine points from Savannah Fry, six each from Izzy Reed and Dory O'Dell, and five points from Brooklyn Stubblefield. The Cougars up 37 to 18 in this PAC championship game. We'll be back with second half action after our halftime show. You're watching the Girls Pack Championship powered by Indiana SRN. Group Warehouse has a strong commitment to their clients as their logistics provider. If you would like to discover how you can improve your service levels while lowering your overall cost, Piper Logistics Group can help. Call Greg Piper today at 317-396-3916. Piper Logistics Group. There's no greater anti-poverty measure than to give a person a job that helps them start to change that trajectory. Morales Group is a full-service staffing company that provides temporary labor uh, in the Indianapolis, central Indiana market. It was a challenge that was given by my father. He wanted me to give back much more than I had been. Then I realized that when he said more, he wanted me to see how I could give more. And it wasn't just in money, but in time and in services. And that's how the Morales Group was created. I started off at Morales Group as an intern. I interned for three years before going on full-time staff year. What I love most about Morales Group is that big family aspect. Um, I come from a big family in Mexico, and since the company is continuously growing, I feel like there's always a new member of the family that I get to know. We're willing to give. We're willing to serve others, and we're not expecting something in return. Come talk to us. We would love to work with you. I'm Sean Branch, and I am entering my sixth year of teaching sixth grade math science Bible here at Greenwood Christian Academy. I think every teacher in the world wants to have an impactful relationship with each of his or her students. Here at GCA, I get to know these kids. Uh, I get to have an impact on their lives because I know what they're interested in, I know what they're passionate about, I understand what they're dealing with and where they're coming from. I've had relationships and communications with their parents, and so I'm able to speak life into them in and out of the classroom, which is a real blessing. 
As a former student athlete myself, I never thought I would be able to use that part of my journey to impact so many people's lives, but now here at GCA as a coach, I can take my knowledge of sport and use ministry, use it as a ministry uh, to help these young people. Learn the story. Love the story. Live the story. Hi, my name is Chris Cross, and for the last six years I have taught elementary at GCA, and I'm currently transitioning into an administrative role. Fourth grade students are often struggling with um, who they are and, and how they relate to others. Being an elementary teacher, I have been able to speak God's truth into the lives of students just in an everyday manner. Uh, just for example of tattling or um, gossiping and, and going into God's Word and saying, how does this Word, God's Word, speak into this relationship? Um, how do we use it? What do we do? And the greatest thing is that I've seen those kids take those pieces of information, put them into practice, and also teach their other fellow students um, out at recess. I've heard them say, well, what do you think God would say about this? And to me, that's the greatest thing that can happen here. or moving project has arrived and college hunks hauling junk and moving has you covered honest uniform nice knowledgeable service college hunks hauling junk and moving Bertner Electric Incorporated has been proudly serving our residential and commercial customers with quality electrical repair for over 33 years. We are fully licensed and insured in electrical wiring and electrician service packages. You'll receive a competitive assessment, whether you're a homeowner or a business owner, first time or long time customer. We offer free estimates for any new project. Call our licensed and experienced electricians today. Welcome back to Greenwood Christian Academy. These two teams playing it out for the Pioneer Academic Athletic Conference Championship. And right now the Cougars well on their way to getting that championship of 37 to 18. Jarrett Lewis with you, along with the coach Keith Myers on Indiana SRN. Thanks so much for tuning in. And it was a mixture of staying patient on offense, waiting to get the right look, but also being aggressive on defense and a couple steals from players like Brooklyn Stubblefield led to some fast break points for GCA. Yeah, and you can see it right here. Quick hands, and look at this pass, and then another great pass, and then finishing it. And the good thing is she finished. And I think that's what Greenwood has done a lot tonight is finishing the play down the floor. The tough thing that they're not doing, they got to stop penetration. Uh, because if you stop penetration, you're going to stop maybe half of what university has had today. And that was one of the keys that you mentioned in the pregame was Coach Weems wants to play fast, and he knows with his guard play, they're going to be able to deflect some passes, getting to, into the passing lanes, and create fast break opportunities for the rest of the team. And you talk about good players, the Indiana basketball Hoosier magazine is out. The 51st uh, magazine, the publication is out now, and has all kinds of players that you would love to watch play and teams you like to watch. If you like more information or you like to get a Hoosier Basketball Magazine, tweet them at Hoosier Basketball Magazine at HBB Magazine and check out Hoosier Basketball Magazine and check out page 24, Indiana SRN. Logo, billboard right there. It says Central Indiana Sports Leader. That's who we are, Indiana SRN. Make sure you pick up that publication of the Hoosier Basketball Magazine. Also follow them on Twitter at HBB Magazine. Just 
six points in that first half from Izzy Reed. It almost looked like she was being more of a facilitator for that offense for GCA. Yeah, you know, that's how good players are. I know that's how you were back in the Eastern Hancock days. You couldn't score, so you just passed the ball to people. I was a team player. There you go. I, I heard they retired your number last night. Is that right? No. No. Maybe, oh, maybe okay. Maybe uh, you were dreaming about it. Maybe I was. GCA will start with the basketball to begin the second half. And they have a comfortable 19-point lead, but they don't want to play too comfortable. How, how about this? The official's ready to put the ball in play, and he says, oh, I forgot my whistle. I better put it on. Some coaches would say, no, just leave it off. You don't need one. <laughs> the whistle was pretty active in that first half because both teams ended up in the bonus. GCA had committed 10 fouls. Trailblazers with eight. But now we begin a new half. GCA seeing a trap up top and good defense as C read that pass and she'll get a fast break two of her own. She led them in scoring in first half with seven and a quick bucket for her makes it nine. Fry over to Dell on the opposite block and a foul down low after Du Bois hit the floor. Yeah, Odell knocked her down to get the rebound. That's a pretty good call. Quick start here for University with, uh, with less than 15 seconds making a good, nice little spurt here. This is still a team that has what it takes to score the basketball. They average 61 and a half points per game. Greenwood Christian a little bit above that mark and their defense is just as good. Stubblefield rejected that pass. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Odell. Mmm, tough one. That's two quick fouls picked up for Dory Odell. And as a result, Peyton C. still staying active. She's going to the free throw line now. She was just one of three from the line in the first half. C hits the first, and now she'll take a couple dribbles before putting up the second. Second one also rattles home for her. C in double figures. Her and Bigelow, the two players on the floor in that category right now. Reed tries to swing it over to Bigelow. It goes off of her foot, and trying to rip it away was Washington. But instead, she'll pick up. I believe her third foul. I have her for three unofficially as well, and it is confirmed that it is her third foul. So one of the starters for University in foul trouble here in the third quarter. Want to give a shout-out to this, the Snell family that are watching down in Greenwood. Thank you very much for watching Indiana SRN. They're watching the GCA Cougars now up 15. Reed outside to Odell. Now Fry has it in the corner. Dory swings it over to Bigelow, who beats Washington off the dribble. Left-handed layup doesn't go down, but Odell keeps it alive. Stubblefield on the drive, pulls up right before she meets Du Bois. Shot was in and out. Izzy Reed, offensive rebound, and the bucket goes for her. That's her specialty. That motor will not stop until she gets as many rebounds as she wants. I'd like to see what her stat was in rebound. I had her unofficially for 14 in the first half. Nice move dot by Du Bois. Kelsey Du Bois now with six points. Dana Fry with it. Trailblazer fans might have been looking for a travel on Fry. She gets it back now. Her and Bigelow passing it back and forth. Fry on the drive. Her and Du Bois hit the floor. Or Odell with another offensive board. Stubblefield's three, just off the mark. A lot of second and third chance opportunities given up by University. But still, they don't allow a shot made on that possession. Hines, three is no good. She hit the first three of the ball game, the first points of the ball game. C hands off to her in the lane. She gets it back. She missed the first time. Has her shot rejected by Fry the second time. Reed 
Nice passing by the Cougars, and Stubblefield gets the bucket. I tell you what, she called for the ball right when she broke. Nice pass, good heads up. Great vision by Bigelow to find Stubblefield. And now the Cougars will move back to this 3-2 zone look. Reed working the top. Almost of the like zone. a box in one type of thing. Coach Blanding not happy with how his players were trying to handle that zone, and he's forced to take a 30 second timeout. Let's watch Stubbenville here. Right here. She's calling for the ball right there. Nice. Nice basket. And you can tell these this team has played together for a long time because they know once that pass is made that they have to kind of shout that out, say, hey, look, I'm making this cut. I'm wide open. Give me the basketball, and I'll score for you guys. Yeah, if you give me the ball, I'll give you the assist. How about that? GCA basketball is brought to you by Craig Reed with WR2 Advisors of Raymond James, located in downtown Indianapolis, where he pursues his clients' financial goals with experienced guidance. You can reach Craig at 317 968-1900, Raymond James and Associates Incorporated, member New York Stock Exchange. Du Bois, out of the timeout quickly, gets her hands on the basketball and scores. Cougars trying to respond now. They get a look at his own defense as well. Chloe Greider has checked into the ball game. Izzy Reed tries to go between two defenders, and they're going to get a foul called. I believe it's going to go on Sierra Hines. Boy, I tell you what, she got away with the travel because she shuffled her feet, but maybe the contact made her. Out of bounds under as Bigelow tried to get the pass. Washington just said, oh, look, I got, I got the basketball in my hands with her back towards the ball. Then, and a, then, a, frustration, then a frustration foul there. I believe Bigelow was the one to pick it up, and now Coach Weems with a timeout. Don't forget high school basketball all week long on Indiana SRN. Check out our website, indianasrn.org. Tonight, we had three, ga we had three games scheduled tonight. The nightcap could be a good one. Ledman and Tr uh, Heritage Christian. Game time, 7.30 right here on Indiana SRN. I know there's a football playoff game. But we're better than football. It's basketball. It's Indiana. It's Indiana SRN. I believe the first of two playoff games is on right now. The Packers and the Rams playing, and then later on. You mean the Packers are into playoffs? I mean, they got some guy named Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I see. With all the weapons he's got, it's amazing he's in the playoffs, right? There's the boys. Short corner shot won't go for her. Fry got the rebound, and she takes a tumble after Hines tried to get the steal. That's the fourth foul on Sierra Hines now in this third quarter. She'll, she'll have to take a seat. Indiana SRN would love you to also put more kids on TV because we want to do that. You can do that very easily by hitting the donate button right there or contact us at coach at Indiana SRN. Reed. Turns around, saw the space she had. The shot doesn't go for her, and they are going to call a travel on her as she was on the ground with the basketball. And, you know, Sexton's coming up. Parent show is next Sunday on it, on the, the network. Check that out as well. These girls will find out where they're going to play their sectional. Sectional play coming up fast. For the girls. And you talk about sectional play, we want to be there as well. We need sponsors to help us cover some of those sectionals. Again, if you'd like to help us, you can contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Anything helps, we'd be glad to stream as many games as we can when sectional time hits in the month of February. Savannah Fry won't get that two pointer to go down. Peyton C. We'll take it coast to coast. Bigelow sat there waiting to get knocked over. The shot won't go. And another jump ball between C and Izzy Reed. Possession arrow stays with University. Trying to get something going on the offensive end. C will throw it in. Corner three doesn't fall for Patterson. The lefty misses that shot. Another fast break, too. 
Bigelow to Stubblefield. They just are so quick of transitioning basketball. And Bassley down the other end is University. Du Bois over her left shoulder. Good defense by Reed. Fry will try to start a fast break of her own. GCA didn't have the numbers as Bigelow will try to get it down low to Reed. And it's stolen away by Hannon. Now Washington. Left handed layup. Left it short. They keep it alive and they kick it out. Sees jumper. Does not get the bounce. And the ball's still on the floor. University gets another try at it. The boys this time gets that shot to go. And quickly, Justin Blandon wants a 30 second timeout. Boy, in the first half, it was GCA getting a lot of those second and third chance opportunities. But now, if you're university, you might be thinking, let's try to stay aggressive on our own. Let's crash the boards because we need as many opportunities as we can down 15. And again, the game is totally different in a championship setting. The officials are going to let you play. They're going to let you play. If it's not out of control, but a physical, and you got to get ready for that because the next season, sectional play, a lot of touch fouls aren't going to be called. It's going to be a little physical game, and you got to be mentally ready for that. This is a very good tune-up for both of these teams. GCA, a top five team in Class 1A, playing this in-season tournament for the PAC Championship University, a top 20 team in Class 2A. Defense has extended out from University. Du Bois trying you know, not to foul on Reed. And you talk about the top 10 and top 20 of these teams. Pretty impressive for a conference to have that many players and, and that good of rate. Izzy Reed steps out and knocks down her first three-point attempt of the ball game. Haven't seen her step out much in this one as Du Bois tries to get another shot over her left shoulder to go down. Reed, this time, will take it all the way. Coast to coast, fast break two. I got her for six in the, in the quarter, is that right? She's got seven. In the quarter. In the quarter after having six in the entire first half. And now it's the largest lead of the ball game at 20. Patterson. Got rid of Bigelow, and now Washington will step into a two, and she'll hit it. The pace has picked up just a little bit in this third quarter. University trying to score and score fast, but they don't want to be trading buckets as Fry got the offensive board. The boys rejected that shot. And now she has the basketball here, under a minute to play. That pass is deflected, but University still with it. The boys with Odell giving her a push. Dory doesn't like the call, and that's going to be the third foul, I believe, on Dory Odell. The boys staying active in this third quarter. Just four points altogether in the first half. Six Hand points here in the third. Hands on knees means she's kind of winded. Uh, again, they had a lot, a little bit of a layover, so. You know, you're trying to get back into shape. But, boy, I tell you what, she hasn't missed the beat. She's played very, very well. And she hasn't come out either. She has played the entire okay. almost uh, 24 minutes. Well, she had to break at halftime. Yeah, you know. Well I don't know how they do it, folks. The boys, although, misses the second. She goes one for two. Cougars with the basketball. Stubblefield able to get around two defenders and now gives it off to Greider who has just checked in. Reed on Hannon. Layup won't go for her. And here's a last chance for University to end the quarter. Try to cut into this 17 point deficit. Washington wanted a quick bucket. Instead it's a missed shot and a chance for GCA and another easy fast break to University late to get back. Trailblazers with five. Du Bois, spin move. Fry with the help side defense able to affect that shot and University won't get off another bucket before the end of the third quarter. The fourth and final quarter coming up in the PAC Championship on Indiana SRN.
How does a good man become even better? By working out? Or by working his way up the corporate ladder? By changing his diet? Or by changing his style? By traveling the world? Or by staying perfectly still? For 300 years, we've helped good men become the best versions of themselves through a dedicated fraternity and by taking an oath to live a life of integrity, service, and brotherly love. Men who are as committed to each other and their families as they are to our noble cause. In the end, we don't just make men better, we make them Masons. Not just a man, a Mason. The final eight minutes coming your way on Indiana SRN. Thanks for tuning in to the Pioneer Conference Championship game. GCA up 50 to 31. Jarrett Lewis with you alongside Keith Myers. GCA well on their way to taking this PAC championship ball game. Inside to Fry. She gets double teamed. Ball's batted away by Hannon. University with the steal. And now Hannon can't. Corral in that pass from Washington. University's next time they are in action is the January 20th against Purdue Poly, and then they're at Ritter on January 26th. They have four games left before sectional play. Greenwood Christian plays the 19th against Morristown. We have that on Web TV. They also play uh, Martinsville. We have that on radio. And then on the 22nd, that's next Friday, we are back here at GCA against homeschool, all on Indiana SRN. GCA with their usual starting five as that pass can't be hauled in by Fry. Back-to-back uh, -back turnovers committed by GCA. And less than four game, you know, four games or five games left in the regular season as we talk about sectional. It's February second. Uh, again, if you like to help us with sectional play, contact us at coach at IndianaSRN.org. Du Bois puts it down on the block to Peyton C. Hines makes a cut, tries to make a move on Fry. And that shot's no good. Here comes Stubblefield. Doesn't have the numbers. Good defense there by Hines, able to recover. Oh! Hines gets rid of Stubblefield, steps into that one. Nice shot from the elbow from Sierra Hines. She hasn't scored since the opening bucket. She had three points to get the scoring going and now gets that too. Bigelow wasn't expecting that pass. GCA still able to get it across the timeline and Coach Weems, he's gonna call a full timeout. Let's take one with him. 50 to 34 the score. You're watching the PAC Championship on Indiana SRN. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Welcome back to Greenwood Christian Academy after the timeout from Alan Weems. Almost an over and back call, but a foul. Going to be called on Kelsey Du Bois. The KOA campgrounds in Indianapolis make your reservations now for 2021. The weekends are filling up fast. KOA located east of Indianapolis off of I-70 and Mount Comfort Road. Check them out at KOA.com. Great people, great camping. Cougars still with it. Stubblefield to Reed. Good extra passing there. And a good cut by Reed. She'll be rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. Now that time what they did is they passed up three three-point shots. And I tell you, all three of those passes, those skids can knock them down. And they got the good shot. They went underneath and got the foul. Selfish offensive, selfless offensive play there from GCA. And Reed trying to pick up more points. She does. She had 13 at the end of three quarters, now 14 points total for her. 
and she did it so quietly, right? I mean, she scores so quiet. Rebound wise, my goodness, she's a tower. Now 15 points for her. She's 4 of 4 from the free throw line. The opening bucket went to University. It was a three from Hines, but ever since then, GCA has led. Missed three from Du Bois. Peyton C's shot is no good. And another tie up between her and Izzy Reed. Du Bois gets it in. Stubblefield almost gets the steal. Hines, double pumps. C, another offensive board. It's going to be the call here. Ball's out of bounds, and it'll go over to the Cougars. You talk about this conference, it's divided into the northern region and the southern region. Uh, some really good teams in this conference. This has been a pretty good battle today. Reed hands off to Stubblefield, and now she gets it back. Fry trying to beat Washington. Ariane Sherrod has checked in for University. Bad pass inside. Attended for Fry and C went after it, but she was out of bounds. Chloe Greider has checked into the ball game, replacing Ellie Bigelow. Alan Weems has only gone with six players in this one. Might see his bench get cleared later on if this lead continues to hold. Kelsey DeBoys guilty of the foul called there. Foul number double zero. Kelsey DeBoys, her third team six. It's the third foul on DeBoys, and now the next one will put Greenwood in the one in bonus. Reed gets the inbounds pass and hands back to Fry. Savannah sees the double team come from Du Bois. Stubblefield with a nice pass fake. Shot won't go. Reed and her trying to get the offensive board. Stubblefield does get it back, and the short jumper easily falls for her. You got to like her determination. Brooklyn Stubblefield makes it a 20 point lead. She has 13. Hines answers on the other end. She was quiet today. Here is the Northern uh, Division in the Pioneer Conference. It's University, Muncie Burris, Liberty Christian, and Anderson Prep. In the South, it's Greenwood Christian, Bethesda Christian, Park Tudor, and Central Christian. Meanwhile, the Cougars empty on that last possession. And Izzy Reed picked up her second foul. Nobody really in foul trouble. Odell and Fry each have three, but with just 4.15 left in the fourth quarter, we might see them eventually hit the bench. Sherrod able to track down that pass as it got away from her. Now she pushes it up the floor to see. University with some numbers. Hines in the corner, knocks down that three. That's her second one of the game. Seven on the, on the, in the quarter. Yeah, she was quiet after making that first bucket, and now a quick seven for her. We've reached the halfway mark. Behind the back dribble. Nicely done by Fry. Tries to get over to Odell, and Du Bois just rips it away from her, and I believe she didn't realize that she was on the end line. She went to the, she looked like she went to Pevitt, and she forgot where she was. Man, it's physical down there, though. They're taking a beat in each other. Odell and Du Bois working hard against one another. Stubblefield got open on that inbounds, but Fry was late to find her. GCA. Reed trying to get out of this double team. And now she's tripped up by C, an unintentional trip as Reed hits the floor. This is an interesting situation here. Referee doesn't like what he's seeing from the fans. He's asking one of them to leave. So sounds like the university fans, the whole game they've been 
looking for, for fouls call, looking for travels. And nothing has been called. And now, I'm not sure what the situation is here. Yeah, one of the fans is, is now leaving. And this is when, you know, this is when high school basketball is just for the kids. It, you know, when the fans get this way, it, it's just, it's not pretty. We need officials. We need officials to referee the game, let them referee the game, let them referee the game, let them referee the game. And they've done a pretty decent job of that it's been here. Very, been very physical, but it's been very physical both times. Let them just do their job. Izzy Reed able to connect on the first. And, yeah, you not something you want to see, not a pretty sight, but uh, you know, we continue to play basketball. And we're involved with the Hoosier, you know, official human, and that's the whole entire element. Let the officials do the game, and then let us teach officials how to call the game and officiate. Leave them alone because they we need them. See? Euro step into the lane. She's been the real bright spot for this offense in university. She has 13 points. What's well, going to be the whistle here? It's going to be a timeout from Coach Allen Weems. Just a 30-second timeout. It looks like he wants to get Ellie Bigelow back into the ball game. I want to finish that thought because I, I'm, I'm really passionate about uh, officially human and officials. I was an official for 20-plus years, uh, Jared, and we need them. If we don't have them, we won't have our game. So as a fan, just enjoy the game. Yes, it's okay to maybe, I don't know, cheer and maybe boo at a call, but not to make it personal because it's not personal. They don't wake up in the morning saying, how can I ruin this game? They don't do that. So let's just get on. And I, I love our, our uh, black guys. Whoever's in charge of the clock <laughs> camp has to be in charge of the cheerleaders tonight because they are just banging the clock camp guy all around the place. Clock is closing in on three minutes left to play. Cougars, and despite from, you know, who you're rooting for and what you think the call should be, Greenwood Christian has, has easily played a much better basketball game. That's why they're up 16 points. Uh, a few fouls or a few calls here and there are not going to change the outcome drastically with, with GCA in the 16-point lead. We get another substitution as Abby Hannon is back in. She replaces Ariane Sherrod. I wonder if our clock cam guy gets extra pay because he's by the cheerleaders. He's going to deal with uh, a little bit than just keeping the cam on the clock as that pass is batted out of bounds. <laughs> oh. Exactly right. Our producer's going anywhere. <laughs> Foul as C was driving in. Looks like Stubblefield picks up that one. She just has three. Du Bois gets in quickly. Hines catch and shoot. Left it short. Bigelow hits the floor and gets the rebound. Reed will push it up. Trailblazers trying to cost something on the defensive end, having to double team the ball, and this will be a foul called against foul Patterson. Patterson her second team seven. That's the seventh team foul now, so GCA will head to the free throw line with the one and one. The team here at Chimney, Solu Chimney Solutions travels throughout the Indianapolis area, making chimney and fireplace maintenance as easy, affordable, and stress-free as possible. Give them a call at 317-757-6979. Stubblefield misses the first free throw. Hines gets that deflected pass. Du Bois, tallest player on the floor, able to reach up and get that too. I like how she plays though. She's pretty physical, finishes at the rim. GCA just trying to keep it out of the hands of the Trailblazers. They'll take free throws or layups. The boys with a mismatch guarding Stubblefield, and she gets called for the reach-in foul. Fourth team foul, or fourth foul, excuse me, on Du Bois, but the ninth team foul for University. 
So we get a stoppage of play. We get a substitution checking in for the first time for University. Stubblefield able to hit the first free throw, so she'll get another one. Becky Williams is the one that's checking in for University, wearing number 22, as Stubblefield goes two of two. Too little, too late for University as Hines able to beat her girl off the dribble and get that bucket to go. And really, Greenwood really took her out of the game early. She only had three in the first, but here in the four, she's got three, five, seven, nine. Just as you said, you know, the defense and the paralysis of Greenwood Christian uh, in the first half. Yeah, the defense was solid in that second and third quarter. So that's where Hines failed to score. So you think if she was involved in those quarters, this game could be much closer. But right now it's University trying to get the basketball back, get it as close as they can. But with a minute left to play, GCA just playing keep away. With Hannon picking up that foul. Greenwood will be in action on January 19th against Morristown. That game is on Web TV on Indiana SRN. On the 31st, they travel to Martinsville, number of a 4A school, Martinsville. That's on radio on SRN 19. Check out the schedule for next week of all of our games on IndianaSRN.org. Coach Weems has put a couple of those big 3A and 4A schools on his schedule. <laughs> When I talk to him every day, I talk to him, I go, what are you doing? You're a 1A school. We're going to get better. And they do get better. Nothing wrong with that, especially preparing for sexual time. When the games, of course, matter most. The boys can't get that one to go. On Reed, she'll get chance for points at the free throw line. Greider picks up the foul. Just the first one on her. The boys, one of two before that free throw went down, so she's now two of three. We'll see some substitutions from GCA. Ellie Bigelow has come back in. Greider still on the floor. Also, we see Addie Jolly wearing number 11 and Kirsten Carlson. Wearing number 10. They'll finish out the final 41.4. Hines swats that pass away from Bigelow. GCA still has it. Jolly looking for someone to get open. Finally hands off to Bigelow. Hines takes that steal away from Greider. Final 20 seconds left. Hines trying to score again. She'll draw the foul. Chance at points at the free throw line. Hines has yet to go to the free throw line. This is her first free throw attempt. She makes the first one. The next game for University... One of them will be against Purdue Poly. That is coming up January 20th. Purdue Poly team is 9-7. and seven. Hines gets able to get the steal. Just like that, a four-point swing with her. Makes it a 10-point deficit with 10 seconds left to go, 9.9 .9 to be exact. Bigelow gets to go to the line and finish out her day. She she just she had a great first half. She has not scored in the second half, but yes, did have 11 in the first, including going five of six from the free throw line. Good day for her at the charity stripe as she will finish seven of eight. 62 to 50, University with the basketball. Hines, deep wow. three, won't go, almost went down for her. Hannon and Greider going after the rebound. GCA comes away with it, and they come away with the Pioneer Academic Athletic Conference Championship, defeating 
the University Trailblazers by a score of 62 to 50. Get a good look at Coach Weems and Coach Blanding from University exchanging words. Blanding with such an impressive mark through his six years coaching there. That's just his 29th loss in six years. And now Coach Weems talking to his team after they close out that Pioneer Championship game. They now are 12-6 and six on the year, 8-3 and three for uh, the Trailblazers. A, a really good game, Jared. I thought the momentum uh, came out very quickly for Greenwood Christian. They just seemed like they uh, had the momentum early. Um, you know, it, for a university, they're, they're a good team. They're very physical, and I think they'll make some noise in, eight, uh, in 2A uh, sectional time. Uh, finishing second in the conference. You can't argue. I mean, there's 12 teams in this conference, and you're one of the best two in the conference. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Greenwood Christian now moves to 12-6, and six, one of the top-ranked teams in Class 1A. University drops to 8-3. and three. They're now on a three-game losing streak after they lost to, their, lost to the home school in their last game. They lost to Cascade before that, so they are now – on a three-game losing streak, looking to get back into the win column with their next game against Purdue Poly. Let's go over the final scoring numbers. First for University, they were led in scoring by Sierra Hines with 16. Kelsey DuBois added 15, 13 points from Peyton C, four points for Cameron Washington, and two points added by Abby Hannon. As the PA announcer will now hand over the trophy after announcing the Greenwood Christian Academy Cougars as the PAC champions in girls basketball. And maybe the girls know that they're on TV and they get to post. There's the captains, coaches taking pictures of, uh, up close. I'm sure that will be on Twitter all night. But congratulations to them. And, uh, you know, great job by our camera guy. The guy that runs the camera, I don't know what his name is, but I'm going to call him Bob. And Chance did a nice job today. Uh, and, of course, Jerry always does a nice job on one and twos. Yeah, shout out to the cameraman Chance. Also, Jerry Collins, our producer, as the whole team gets in on the action. The three captains, their scoring looked like this. Izzy Reed setting the pace as usual, posting another double-double, 19 points for her. Brooklyn Stubblefield added 15 points. Savannah Fry with nine. The rest of the scoring, Ellie Bigelow had 11 in the first half. She finishes with 13 points with an impressive day at the free throw line, going seven of eight there. And then finally, the last starter, Dory O'Dell, with six points. All five of those starters able to score, all made great contributions into getting this win. It, they were patient on offense. You know, Coach Weems said he might have wanted to pick up the pace a little bit, play fast. He thought that would play to their advantage, and that's what they did on the defensive end, getting steals, leading to fast break twos. And a congratulations to Izzy Reed as well. Johnson County leading scorer took over that. Nice job. Uh, and, uh, man, I tell you, well-deserved and very humble young girl. But congratulations to her and her family for that. Don't forget the last game of the triple header tonight, 730. Uh, you got time to go eat and come back, uh, back home to watch Heritage Christian, Ledman Boys uh, tonight. Tip off 7.30. Pre-game, I do believe, is at 7.25. Uh, C.J. Benberry and Justin Griffiths on that call. Uh, good, good job today. Yeah, make sure you check out that game later today. Thanks so much for tuning in on Indiana SRN. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Make sure you also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get updates on the weekly schedule. Get scores. You'll know when games are going live and when you can tune in. For Keith Myers, I'm Jarrett Lewis saying so long. Greenwood Christian Academy wins it 62-50. to 50.